If you find that you're getting frustrated because you're taking photos and your images are out of focus and blurry, then stick around because in this week's video, I wanna share with you some really cool tips to help you get sharper images. Welcome to the Photo Genius channel. Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel where I post regular photography tutorials, all designed to help you get more from your digital camera. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Now we've all been there, we take a picture, we look at it on the screen on the back of the camera and it looks pretty amazing. Only to find though, when we get home and view it on a computer or a larger screen, it's not nearly as pin sharp as we had hoped. Now there's a number of reasons why your images may look out of focus, blurry or soft. Sometimes it's a focus issue, sometimes it's camera or subject movement, but don't worry, I've got you covered. In this video, I wanna share five tips to help you get sharper images. Now my first tip is to make sure that you're in charge rather than the camera being in charge and making decisions on your behalf. After all, you want the camera to focus on what you want it to focus on. So my first tip is to get out of auto mode and try one of the other modes. If you're an absolute beginner, program mode is a great mode to start with. If not, try one of the priority modes. And if you're feeling more confident with your camera, give manual a go. Any of these modes will give you more control over your camera so you can get the results that you want. So with the camera out of auto, you get to control the camera's focus points. These are simply the points at which the camera can focus and the number of points will vary depending on the camera type. Being able to control the focus points is essential if you want to be able to choose where and on what your camera focuses. So if you have a Canon camera, look for a button with this symbol. Pressing this button will then allow you to select the focus points individually simply by turning the dial on the camera. With this Nikon camera, I can also change the focus point using the round multi selector on the back of the camera, but you do need to select the single focus point first. Now you can do this by pressing the I button and then changing the mode. Now, if you like doing portrait photography and this tip applies as much to animals as it does to people, then make sure the eyes of your subject are in focus. Otherwise, the picture doesn't really work. So if the subject is looking directly into the camera, it doesn't matter which eye you focus on, but make sure you place the focus point on one of the two eyes. Now, if your subject is looking off camera, then what you wanna do is make sure you focus on the eye that is closest to the camera. My next tip is to make sure you're using the correct autofocus mode. And to begin with, let's look at the mode that for most people will be the default. And this is ideal when you're taking a picture of a subject that isn't moving. With the exception of manual focus, which I cover in another video, cameras will typically have two focus modes. One is ideal for focusing on a non-moving or static subject, and the other is great for focusing on a moving subject. So if you like taking photos of landscapes, architecture, products, and generally subjects that are not moving, then the ideal focus mode for you is Autofocus Single, or AFS SAF. If you have a Canon camera, this same mode is called One Shot. Now, if you do have a Canon camera, then One Shot is the factory setting, so you'll probably see this displayed on the LCD screen. If you don't, then use the AF button on the back of the camera to select it. If your camera doesn't have an AF button, then you can use the Q button. Select one shot and press set. If you're a Nikon user, the factory default is usually AFA. So using the I button, you can change this to the AFS mode. And note how on this particular camera, a picture of a landscape is displayed. This of course confirms what type of subject this focus mode is ideal for. Now with Fujifilm and Panasonic Lumix cameras, they often will have a switch on the camera body to allow you to select the mode. Now the AFS one shot mode is great and for many of you it will be the default setting. The only problem with that mode however is if your subject moves either closer or further away from the camera after focusing. Let me show you what I mean. For this demonstration, my daughter kindly offered to help. Now using the AFS mode, I move the focus to my subject and take the first shot. And as you can see, the image looks great and my subject is in focus. 
but for the second shot, my subject moves closer to the camera and as you can see, goes out of focus. To fix this, I'm going to select the continuous autofocus mode, which on this camera is AFC. The difference now is if the subject moves, the camera responds by automatically and continuously adjusting the focus, keeping the subject looking sharp. Continuous autofocus is not surprisingly CAF on most cameras, sometimes AFC, and Canon, just to be different, call this very same feature AI Servo. So the big difference between this mode and the one we looked at previously is that with this autofocus mode, if your subject should move either closer or further away from the camera, the camera will respond by automatically adjusting the focus. This is a great mode. But another top tip for you, to make sure the autofocus works, you need to keep the shutter button pressed halfway down, otherwise the autofocus is turned off. Now in order for me to continue making videos like this that you can watch for free, I do rely on the support of sponsors. So I wanna say a big thank you to NordVPN for kindly sponsoring this week's video. If you're a regular viewer to my channel, you'll know that in order to demonstrate camera techniques, I'll often visit different locations in and around Brisbane. Today, for example, I'm on the bay taking some photos for a forthcoming video. But even though I'm not in the office, I can still do all the essential stuff like check and reply to emails, post to socials, and even update my website, all using my smartphone. And I can do these things in confidence knowing that NordVPN has me covered and is keeping me and my data safe. A VPN is a service that protects you, your data and your privacy online by encrypting your internet traffic and hiding your IP address, keeping you safe from cyber threats and harmful websites. NordVPN has over 500 servers in 60 countries, so using the app, I can easily select any server I like in any location. This means I can see and watch content that may be restricted to viewers in the USA only, even though I'm on the other side of the world in Australia. So I've been using NordVPN for some time. In fact, I'm using it right now. What I love is the peace of mind that it gives me, knowing that my data is safe no matter where I'm using it, at home, in the office, or on location like today. So why not give it a go? With a choice of three plans to choose from, with Nord's bundle deals, you can enjoy the leading VPN service and secure your connection, passwords, and files. Simply click on the link below this video and use the promo code PHOTOGENIUS to get a two-year plan plus one additional month and a huge discount. Plus, it's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. And a big thank you to NordVPN for supporting the PHOTOGENIUS channel. Now take a look at this image. It looks pretty good until we zoom in, and then it looks out of focus. But actually, on this occasion, the focus was fine. What you're seeing is blur caused by camera movement. And likewise, this can be caused by subject movement. And this can be a real problem. But of course, we can fix it. This brings me on to my next tip. When using a fast shutter speed, because the shutter opens and closes so quickly, some movement of the camera is not going to be a big issue. But if we slow the shutter down, because the shutter is now open longer, any movement of the camera can result in a blurry image. So my advice is to keep an eye on the shutter speed, and if you're using a standard lens, try and ensure you stay around 1 60th of a second or higher. If, however, you're using a longer telephoto lens, you will need to use a faster shutter speed. I've made a separate video that goes into more detail. Look out for the link at the end of the video. Now, of course, the ultimate fix for camera movement is to invest in a tripod. In my book, a tripod is a must-have bit of kit. I have made a dedicated video all about tripods, so for now, all I want to say is that a tripod is the ultimate fix for blurry images caused by camera movement, and images like these I simply could not have got without one. Now my next tip is to consider very carefully what aperture you're going to use. Aperture is an opening in the lens that we can use to control how much light passes through the lens. Now the aperture also controls something called depth of field, which in layman's terms will affect how much of your image is acceptably sharp. 
Now a popular look and technique is to create a blurry background because this makes the subject stand out and this is called a shallow depth of field. This can be achieved by using a wide aperture, which is a lower F number. For this very reason, lenses that have a wider aperture are very popular. Prime lenses, for example, such as the Canon 50mm f1.8 lens, also known as the Nifty 50, is very popular as it's very affordable. But of course, if you want more of your image to be sharp and in focus, then what you want is to create a greater depth of field. So my recommendation here is to use a smaller aperture, which is a higher F number. Landscape photographers, for example, will often set the aperture to around F11 to F16. So if you are lucky and you have a prime lens like the Nifty 50 here, the takeaway from this is that you don't have to shoot with the aperture wide open all the time. Try shooting at f2.8, maybe close it down to f2. You may find you get better results. Now my next tip is all about stabilization. Now depending on what camera system you've got, this may be called image stabilization, maybe vibration reduction, optical image stabilization, steady shot, and if you've got a mirrorless camera, possibly IBIS. Now this is a great feature that will help give you steadier, sharper photos. So if you're using your camera handheld, I would recommend turning these features on. But as well as knowing when to use it, it's good to know when not to use it. If you're taking photos using a tripod, this might be landscape photography for example, then you need to turn it off. Otherwise it can actually work against you and cause your images to look soft. And that's not what we want. So if you're using your camera handheld, turn the stabilization on. If you're using a tripod, turn it off. Now before I wrap up this week's video, I've got a bonus tip for you. And that is, as the t-shirt says, ISO keep it low. ISO is a great function of the camera and can be very useful. If you increase the ISO, you can make your picture brighter, but at a cost. The higher the ISO, the more grainy your images will look. We call this digital noise. Now this can also make your images look soft. And of course, the theme of this week's video is to get sharp images not soft images. So where possible, ISO keep it low. My recommendation is 200. Now, if you wanna pick up a t-shirt, you'll find a link in the description below this video. If you've enjoyed this video and you picked up some cool tips, please consider giving it a thumbs up. It helps the videos get noticed. That helps the channel grow. If you don't wanna miss out on future videos, make sure you're subscribed and that's about it. Other than to say, thanks for watching and I hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya, bye.